Great Day class. Great Day. My name is Rapunzel Williams, and I will be your moderator for today's class. Please silence our cell phones and all electronic devices. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to an approved and existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operations of his eternal purpose, power, and plan operate throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry C. Henley, in the state of Ohio in the year of 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year of 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, Jamaica, Africa, and certain other foreign countries. The Omaha class meeting was established in the year of 2000 and 16. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which can be contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim, and it has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifests in or out of a physical body is Yahshua, and it has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle, Apostle Paul filled with the Holy Spirit tells us in 1 Corinthians, 8 and 5, that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name, and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is a title that the Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name but it's an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into any good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, or the Latin language have any letters or characters in their alphabets that will produce the sound that is made by the letter J. And neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after Messiah's death. So such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and correct and original name of the Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Now, Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he's incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn a cloud all around the edges of this chart to show how that everything on this chart is within a cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within this pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now Yahweh knowing that man cannot perceive of him in this pure spirit state, he took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the Word or Son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape or form of a man but it's not flesh and blood. And this form can only be seen in divine vision and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifests himself 
and a physical body and walk the earth plain as Joshua Messiah, who the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given to the salvation, and we must know that name. So a simple yet intelligent question you should ask yourself is what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title can be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern of the universe because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and showed him a tabernacle pattern in a vision and instructed him to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of the most holy place, the holy place, and the court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. Also in this school, we show proof how everything is made and operate according to this threefold tabernacle pattern and absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Our ten primary constitutional aims and objectives are for the Institute are as follows. One, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and how they actually exist. Two, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua Messiah without distinction of nationality, race, creed, caste, sex, or color. Three, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and powers late in men. Four, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, compare religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern and practical science. Five, to escapade current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to know, learn, and understand the operations of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation of time, I mean, excuse me, of ages. Seven, to deserve and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan, and demons, operating mystery ridiculously on earth through the dispensation of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation of faith, which was once delivered into the Son and truth of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men, whereby men can be saved, that save the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And ten, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan is speak the truth. We will start our class off this evening with the opening prayer, which will be given by Dr. Stephon Williams. And our scripture lesson for this evening is 1 John, the fourth chapter, and that will be read by myself, Dr. Ponce Williams. Let us all remain seated for the opening prayer. Let us say great day to the class. Great day. Let us all bar our hearts and minds and give reverence and, and honor and thanksgiving and thanks to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh Elohim, in the name of the only begotten Son, Yahshua Messiah, our Savior, King and Brother. Heavenly Father, Yahweh, we just ever so thankful and we thank you so much, Father, for your mercy and your grace and your, your loving kindness and your faithfulness, Father. We we love you because you first loved us, Father. We ask that you open up our spiritual eyes of understanding today, our spiritual ears of understanding today, Father, and our soul to receive yes. the special prepared meal, Father. You already have prepared for our souls, Father, before the foundation of the world. Father, we ask that you increase our inner man and decrease our outer man. Father, we ask that you, as this class is going out on y'all too today, Father, that you continue to break the shackles 
that are surrounding souls today, Father, that you continue to, to deliver and set free and resurrect dead souls, Father, back to life so that those souls will have a chance to receive eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. And Father, we also ask that as this class go out on Yahshua too, once again, that it will be encouraging and enlightening to those that you already have chosen, Father, for the foundation of the world. All these blessings and requests, Father, we ask the name only you got, Son, the only wise, the only my saving King and brother, Yahshua the Messiah, let us all say, Hallelujah. Great day again, class. Great day. I'll be reading for you uh, 1 John, the fourth chapter of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testament. Should be compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revived by the late A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association Corporation, repented by Yahshua Promotions. That's 1 John, the fourth chapter. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether they are of Yahweh, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of Yahweh. Every spirit that confesses that Yahshua the Messiah is come in the flesh is of Yahweh. And every spirit that confesses not that Yahweh Excuse me, that not that Yahshua the Messiah is come in the flesh is not of Yahweh. And this is that spirit of Anti Messiah. Whereof ye have heard that it shall it shall come. And even now already is it in the world. Ye are of Yahweh, little children, and have overcome it. Because greater is he that is in you than that which is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world. And the world hears them. We are of Yahweh. He that knoweth Yahweh heareth us. He that is not of Yahweh heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love, for love is of Yahweh. And everyone that loveth is born of Yahweh and knoweth Yahweh. He that loveth not knoweth not Yahweh, for Yahweh is love. In this in this was manifest the love of Yahweh towards us, because that he sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love Yahweh, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation right. for our sins. Beloved, if Yahweh so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen Yahweh at any time. If we love one another, Yahweh dwelleth in us, and his love is perfect in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Yahshua is the Son of Yahweh, Yahweh dwelleth in him, and he in Yahweh. And we have known and believed the love that Yahweh has towards us. Yahweh is love. 
and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in Yahweh, and Yahweh in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love passes out fear, because fear hath torment. And, excuse me, and he that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love Yahweh, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother who he has seen, how can he love Yahweh whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth Yahweh love his brother also. I just read for you First John, the fourth chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great day again, class. Great day. I would like to remind the class to please silence our cell phones and all the kind of devices. Thank you. It's an honor and a pleasure to call our speaker for this evening, Dr. Stephon Williams. I want to say great day to the class once again. Great day. I'm just uh, so thankful and I thank Yahweh so much for bringing me back to another class one more time to learn more of his eternal divine purpose, pattern, and plan. Yes. And learn more of him, how he truly is and how he actually exists. Today is our workshop and today is Friday and we have entitled our workshop Transcript Fridays. And that means we'll be reading transcripts in their entirety every Friday of the month, Yahweh willing. And this evening's transcript is entitled, Ever Presence of Yahweh and IDMR Conduct by Dr. Henry C. Kinley, Los Angeles, California, 1973. Once again, Once again, our transcript that we're going to be reading this Friday is entitled Ever Presence of Yahweh and I Dim Our Conduct by Henry C. Kinley, Los Angeles, California, 1973. Let's get into it. Once again, our evening transcript is entitled Ever Presence of Yahweh and I Give Our Conduct by Dr. Henry C. Kinley, Los Angeles, California, 1973. Let's begin. It says, and it doesn't make any difference whether we, be, whether we live or die just since we're conscious of the realization of the Ever Presence of Yahweh at all times. Now, when you get right down to basic fundamental principles of the definition of death, I don't expect to die, and I hope you won't either. We're not preaching and teaching death, but eternal life. Now, somebody may mis misconstrue that just like they do everything else, and the possibilities are that somebody that had the misunderstanding of it would say, that man said so and so and so and so. Now there he goes to the, or there they go to the cemetery. Well, I'm not talking about that. Everybody's going to have to take off this body, good, bad, and indifferent. This is not the body that shall be. Everybody. Now, I don't care how righteous you are or how unrighteous you are, 
you are going to have to depart from this physical body that you now are in. Okay. I remember a, I remember a statement of the apostle. He said this that after the earthly house of the tabernacle be dissolved, we have a, another building not made with hands eternal in the heavens. Of course, a lot of these spiritual utterances is not understood by a carnal mind very rarely. Now, we had the first epistle of John, the fourth chapter, read to you this evening. And I want to tell you one of the paramount objectives and aims of this school is to help you find and know Yahweh. Now, we want to know him just like he is. And oftentimes, it's been misconstrued. Didn't know who we were talking to. Didn't understand what you were talking about. And Yahweh wasn't far off. Way above the sun, moon, and the stars or somewhere in the ethereal space of the universe. That's not so. Now you can understand that kind of talk when you just come right out flatly and deny a thing. That's not so. It's in him that we live and we move and we have our being. He is also, he has always been ever present and never absent at no time. We've been taught many erroneous things about it. But as I stated when I first got up here, now there's many false doctrines in the world, many erroneous concepts. But the thought that I want to bring to you tonight is this, the ever presence of Yahweh. People have said when they come in, into a conclave like you are gathered here, they have said this, that they want God, or wrongly called, which you know truly Yahweh, but you're talking about the churches, right? Mm -hmm. He said they wanted that they wanted God to come in and take charge of the meeting and make it what it ought, ought to be. <laughs> See, that's just plain downright carnality, ignorance, and superstition, which we want to dispense with. We're through. We're through with that. He was here before you got here. <laughs> come along with you and shall depart from this building with you. Ain't that something? That's something. All right. And for the rest of your life, it has been with you ever since you got here, whether you are conscious of his <laughs> ever present or not. Now, the attitude and disposition of some of the people that profess to, to belong to the school and how they treat one another is disgraceful and shameful. Now, you see, I'm just going to tell you like it is. Now, you can get hot about it if you want to. It's all right with me. Get as hot as you please, but remember this one thing. You won't be the first one that ever got hot at me, and more than likely, you won't be the last. And they have got hot enough at me to do something about it. They have given me a good whipping. And I don't think that any of you can boast about you shedding blood or being beat up for the sake of the gospel any more so than I. I've been beat up. I mean bodily beat up, but I feel as the apostle said, no man in the reason of cheers shall stop me from boasting and preaching of the gospel, which I received not from no institution, and I didn't receive it from no man. You hear that? Mm -hmm. I want to talk about that some tonight too. That's not where I got it. That's not that's not where I got it at. And I want to say this too. Now, this is 1973. You're going to be uh, have some beginnings and some endings in 1973. One of the things that's to come has already been published in the Herald Examiner. I don't know if any of you noticed it or not, and that was the new Bible that was endorsed by the Protestants, Michael Ramsey of England, and also the Vatican, and the rest of the religious people. They have all endorsed it and said that it could be used by all of them. There won't be any conflicts be between the religious denominations about that Bible, and it will be released in the United States in April of this year. 
Now, you have read and heard about the death of our president, Lyndon B. Johnson, and you've also heard about the uh, ces cessation of hostilities in North, South, between North and South Vietnam and the United States. And the word peace is on everybody's mind now. And Yash Masai said, when they say peace and safety, then comes sudden destruction. And we don't want to be caught in the middle. Now the thing that would happen tonight, for the most part, is this, is your attitude and your disposition toward one another and the ever presence of Yahweh. And we want you to know when you manifest that igno, igno, uh, ignominious, satanic, whether it's between a husband and a wife, or the mother and the children, or whatnot, I would advise you to start immediately to get rid of such an idea. And John, in his first epistle, in the fourth chapter, has stated, Yahweh is love. Now, it's a matter of absolute impossibility for you to love Yahweh and hate your brother. Now, you ought not to be offensive your own self. You can't help nobody that way. In fact, the matter you need some help. Now, let's face it now and get right down to rock bottom with it. Let's face it. Your whole witnesses in the Roman Catholic and the Church of God's people and a quite and quite a few people all over the world. Now listen at what I'm saying now. They think that the end, when Jesus shall come down through the sky and the judgment be set up. You know Jesus is the only thing for the Savior. Right. The true name of our Savior, Yahshua right. the Messiah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Alright? So it says, I'm just going to put the correct name here. It says, now when Yahshua shall come down through the sky and the judgment be set up, they, they think that. In other words, that the whole thing we come to a decided conclusion in 1975. Now, when you take the Roman Catholics, as many of them as they are, and the majority of the Protestants, everybody expected something to happen in 1975. Now, I told you this. It will not be 1975. It will either be sooner or afterwards. Then I want you to be conscious of this one thing in particular as of right now. You are now in the judgment. All right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go right over here just for a moment here. Just follow me. And we have one on our uh, on this chart here, which is our chart entitled Chart on Pattern or Plan of Salvation. You see that one, two, three, four, five, six circles. Or one, two, three, four, five, six. This is this at the seventh circle here. And it says judgment. Okay, like a big old fist, right? Mm -hmm. It says judgment. Wicked punished, earth destroys this end. This also says resurrection, okay? okay? So it said we're now in the judgment, mm -hmm. okay? It says, now, a lot of people, they don't realize that. They don't recognize it. They don't know it. They don't understand it. They don't believe it. They don't think about it. The carnal mind leads you on off somewhere, and a lot of people have talked about the difference between what you might call physical fire and consuming fire of Yahweh. And they think that what I just go ahead on and do wrong, and when it comes time for me to, to be punished for my wrongdoing, it won't be just it will it won't be just it won't be but just a moment or two and then it'll just be all over with. I beg your pardon. It's not like that. And the fire we're talking about, Yahweh being a consuming fire, it's not like that. It's not like the fire you kindle out here and burn up something here on earth. It's not like that. That fire that you kindle is a lot of it's a lot of things it will not consume. But Yahweh is a consuming fire, consuming everything. Ain't that something? All right? Uh -huh. So we like we say as a pictorial illustration right here, doing our moderation, we said we have drawn a cloud, right? Right. 
Now we can also say we have drawn fire. All mm -hmm. right. When we talk about no physical fire, we talking about spiritual fire. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who was Yahweh? See Yahweh fire. Who was fire? He was going to consume physical fire as you, as you know it to be. All right. Yes. That's me. Yes. So you want to mess with that, right? You want to be one with the fire. All right. Right. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can find that for yourself, uh, Second Peter, the third chapter. Read the whole chapter for yourself, ladies and gentlemen. I would encourage those that are viewing this video to read the second chap, the Second Peter, the third chapter, the whole chapter, where we talk about uh, what's going to what's what's uh, going to occur at any moment. Okay, all right. Okay. It says, now if you knew anything about the cremation of a physical body. You could consume or you could burn the flesh, but the bones, you then, uh, they, will be, they will become a place where they become fragile. But you have to take a roller or something and crush them up. Did you know that? And when you put a physical body, I'm talking about cremation now, on fire. <laughs> and, and those, and, and, and it could be those watching the video that want to get these physical bodies Cremated, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. But he says, "I'm talking about cremation now on fire. The person that's supposed to be dead, and when that fire begins to consume or burn that body, you know what happens? That body screams. Did you know that before that now? Yes, I did. Yes, sir. You do. You do that before that? Yes. How you know that about that? Oh, uh, I think we spoke about it. Well, we read time. about it, right? Yes. But this is this is what we got it from. See this yeah. transcript. Okay. So, so if those that are viewing it didn't, didn't know it before now, mm -hmm. you might want to <laughs> think about being cremated <laughs> because you, you're not getting away with nothing. It said yeah. that their physical body screams when it is being cremated. Did you hear that? Yes. Read it again. Okay. He says, I'm talking about, he says, and when you got, he said, and when you put a physical body, I'm talking about cremation now on fire, Okay. So he said, when you put this physical body on fire, right, mm -hmm. on cremating, cremating it, the person that's supposed to be dead, mm -hmm. and when that fire begins to consume or, or to burn that body, you know what happens? That body screams. Am I wrong about that, Dr. Half? Dr. Hobbs? Dr. Hobbs, Dr. Hobbs says, it will move also, Doc. <laughs> Not only will it scream, it will also move. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. And the spirit is out of the body. Ain't that something? Got to be careful, right? Yes. He said, yes. He said, yes, sir. Scream and move. <laughs> I'll tell you something else about that physical body, too, that most of you are not conscious of. You can take it out there and lay it out there dead now. He said, dead now, mind you. Lay it out here in the field. In like an open field, right? Mm -hmm. Lay it out in the field someplace and let it decompose. And the atomic particles of matter that makes up your physical body will fertilize the grass. Ain't that something? And the seed and the vegetation around you. And it'll grow up higher there than it will anywhere else. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. You can take a physical body and put it in a cask with a plate, a glass plate over it and put it in a vault, seal it up airtight and let it stay there for years and years and you can walk in and look at it. Many walk, many wealthy people have done their relative that way. Get something? Yes. <laughs> well, I tell you, a call of mine is something else. And they have, and, and they've remained there for many, many years, but the minute you open it or some air get to it, it's gone, decomposed that quick. Just vanish. Think that's something? Nah. Just disappear. <laughs> Did you know that? He said, that's right. <laughs> now, there's a lot of things that you need to know about the physical body and about your creator or spiritual body, right? And when you get and when you get into a better knowledge of it, then you will become to know one another better and understand one another better. Now, this is the way that we have thought it was through the years. We have thought that Yahweh, who the world who the world predominantly calls God, see, 
we thought that Yahweh was way up yonder somewhere in the sky. And we had to, to holler and scream and carry on in order to invoke his attention. And we had to in, even inflict ourselves with instruments and all, call it suffering, and first one thing and another. You would be surprised at the superstitions and ignorance of the people. And to go into the Greek or Roman cyclops or of mythology and superstition, you will be surprised to go into even the Hebrew and the Babylonian Talmud and Mishnah or Midrash. You could find a whole lot of superstition there. I'll give you some idea. Like Buddhism and making marks in your body and making signs and crosses and all kinds of superstition theories, right? So you see that now. You see a lot of these people got these tattoos with crosses and all types mm -hmm. of things on their body. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. They think they're going to carry this stuff on to another life, right? This physical body, they think they, they, they that, right? right? The jewelry you have on, the gold teeth, the tongue piercing, the old nose piercing, they think they're going to carry that stuff on, you understand, mm -hmm. after they pass away. They think they're going somewhere, you know what I mean, with all that stuff on the physical body. You understand what I'm talking about? It's a carnal mind. You see how it goes? Yes. It's a carnal mind of thinking. It said, black cat cross your path, you take and walk <laughs> so many steps backwards, throw some salt over your left <laughs> shoulder. Just anything you can think of, see. We try everything, and you'd be surprised how ignorant people are when it comes to the error presence of Yahweh and how little they know about Him. Now, for the rest of the time that I have to be up here, I want to see if I can get Him a little bit closer to you. You got something? Mm -hmm. All right. That He has been in the past, so we want to, want to be talking about some mythological deity. So we'll be able to discern him in one another. That's, that's real right there. And in the mean, that's why y'all was so merciful to us, right? Huh? Right. You up? Yes. All right. He said, in, and in the meantime, try to find out something about who you are. It would be nice if we could just find out who we are, and then we wouldn't have such a great big problem trying to find out something about Yahweh. This body that you have here, this is not your body. <laughs> Maybe you better read that. All right? Now, I want you to get right here. You just, you just keep it right here. I just zoom in so you can. All right? Okay. Go ahead and zoom in if you can, please. Okay. Go ahead, please. A little quick here. Okay. It says, now, this chart, is, this, this chart is entitled, Man Made in the Image of Elohim by the Power of Tabernacle, right? Right. So this physical body, which we think it are, which we think is, which we think is ours, mm -hmm. we're gonna read about it. It's a tabernacle of man, see. And it has the chapter and verse what you're about to read is First Corinthians six, chapter verse nineteen and twenty. I need that read, please, reader. First Corinthians six nineteen and twenty out of the Holy Name Bible. Read on, please. What know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Read. Which is not, which is in you. All right, he says, he says, so the Holy Spirit was in Joshua, right? Mm -hmm. That's what the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is not those that you might see fumbling and, and, and fumbling at the mouth and flipped all out and passed out and running around, right? Right. That's a dirty spirit or a demonic spirit, right? He said, but the Holy Spirit, in a moderation sense, the Holy Spirit name is Yahshua, right? Right. Right, so read that over again, please. First Corinthians 6, 19 to 20, out of the Holy Name Bible. What? What? No. What? He say now he said what like you mean to tell me you didn't know this, but you're gonna know it today. What? What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? No, what? Know ye not that your body is a temple of Yahshua. Read. Which is in you. Now, Yahshua's in you after today. Read. Which ye have of Yahweh. Have of Yahweh, read. And ye are not your own. We are not our own, read. For ye are bought with a price. These Bible these Bibles was purchased and bought back for Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua, to take a residency inside these bodies. Read. Therefore, glorify Yahweh in your body read. and in your spirit, you which, do it, read. which are his. All right, let's get it clear, all right? All right. Yahweh's body, not ours. Let's get something. Yes. <laughs> all right. 
Thank you, reader. It says, it says, reader says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Now look, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Now that's what your body is, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now how do you think intelligent people like the so-called Jehovah Witnesses could go around and say that he doesn't abide in, abide in his own house or in his temple? He's a vital force upon you, all right? Mm -hmm. So the Jehovah Witnesses believe that the Holy Spirit is, 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 is a vital force upon you, right? Mm -hmm. Not in you. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. See, so you're going back to where when John, when, uh, 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 when uh, it was already prophesied that John, uh, John, John's going to be like the, uh, the forerunner, mm -hmm. and he's going to recognize Joshua by his dove, you know, by his, when his dove is going to come down and, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, come upon, upon him in a sense, right? So that's where they got that from, right? <laughs> it's this comic cat, don't know what the hell they're talking about. Well, he know what they're doing, right? Right. That's been fulfilled, so I go. See, that's been fulfilled, so I go. Mm -hmm. All right. It says now, see how easy it is for you, you to slide off into some another something, something, another unconsciously and not pay no attention to it. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the, is, uh, the temple of the Holy Spirit? Temple of the Holy Spirit. Now I want to tell you where your body comes from. Hold what you got there. See, we have to, we have to find out something about this. In the 17th chapter of Acts, we'll be, we're coming back here where we were. In the 17th chapter of Acts of the Apostles, we talk about the fatherhood of Yahweh. And you will find there that Paul is in Athens, Greece, in Mars Hill. And the Grecians were the great philosophers the, the world has ever known anything about. And they spent their time and would listen to anything anybody had to say they were always on, on the lookout for something strange to tickle their ears with and for them to look into. And so therefore, when the apostle come along, Apostle Saul or Paul, and he was up in Mars Hills, they said, well, let's see what this Bible is going to have to say. And so then they gave him audience and he began to speak. And he told them, said, you ought not to think that the, that, that the supernal nature is like wood and hay and stubble and so forth and so on. Now listen now, we're talking about a body. And what about it? We are the what? The offspring. Okay? All right? Okay. I'm just going to get right over here. Just, just get over here. Pan as far as you can. Okay? Okay. All right? This is our chart entitled The Create the Creator Image by His Creation, Yahweh Elohim Yahshua. It's his spirit, substance, source, and law, eternity. In this uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. This 20 letter word is pronounced philoprogenitiveness. That means the love for one's offspring, okay? Mm. All right? Mm -hmm. So we sprung off of Yahweh, okay? Mm. Yahweh's our father, and we are his children, okay? All right? So that's what offspring, that's what the word progenitiveness means. It means offspring, or distinctive love for your offspring, okay? Mm. It says offspring of Yahweh. We sprung off not from an ape. So you put ape in Yahweh. <laughs> And not from a monkey, but we are the offspring of Yahweh. Now the offspring ought, ought to look something like the place of his original source. Or he ought to or he ought to like his father. Wouldn't you think so? Now this is what I'm after now. This is what I'm after. I'm trying to get you out of the idea of talking about Yahweh being a spirit and you can't point out nothing and you can't find nothing nowhere. You don't have no body. You don't have no body nowhere. Now that's what we're trying to talk, that's what we're trying to talk about. And then it just becomes a subject that you started out on, which you don't have no foundation for. You don't have no roots, you don't have no proof, you don't have nothing. Well, then somebody said, well, Yahweh is spirit. 
Well, one is spirit. Say, well, that's 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 God, true to Yahweh, right? Mm -hmm. But the world says. Right. Then here you go rocking backwards and forwards. You can't get nowhere. You don't have no idea of what you're talking about. And neither does the other fellow. And the consequences are neither one of you can convince anyone either one way or the other. Why not? Because you don't know and either do they. Now what we're talking about is Yahweh is spirit. Taking on shape and form. That's the body. Okay? So we understand that the Maharaj you said, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Right? Right. The Yahweh says right here, Yahweh is spirit, right? That's right. Taste, shape, and form is Yahweh Elder. This is not all of Yahweh, mm -hmm. but right, Yahweh in part. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Same source, same stuff, there's no, no, no lack of power, okay? Mm -hmm. Alright, so Yahweh, taste, shape, and form is Yahweh Elder, right? Right. It manifests himself in the physical body, right? Mm -hmm. So we got a body in two places, right? Right. The super court will form only can be seen in divine visions mm -hmm. and understood in divine revelation, right? Then mm -hmm. Yahweh can come on down in another state, mm -hmm. right? A concrete state as Yahshua the Messiah, all right? Mm -hmm. Okay? So Yahweh has three states of existence, two manifestations of the one spirit, all right? Mm -hmm. You got a body here, okay? Mm -hmm. Incorporeal, corporeal, okay? Yes. All right? That's Yahweh. It says, Yahweh is spirit taking on shape and form. That's the body. He has a body and then we are the offspring from that. Now that's what I am. That's what we're talking about. Now listen closely to what I'm saying. We have to find and we have to have a body somewhere. Now let me give you some idea about what I'm talking about so you can understand me. Now you say Israel come out of Egypt and Moses leading them. So forth and so on, right? So you say Israel come out of Egypt. And Moses lead them, mm -hmm. and so forth and so on. Right? All they said, right. And when they went through the, and when they went through the Red Sea, see, when they went through the Red Sea, see, they saw no similitude. No similitude. They didn't. Well, why didn't they see no similitude? Well, because everybody looked like looked alike. Every man looked like a man, and every woman looked like a woman. So they didn't. They they hadn't seen anything to compare it with. In other words, they had to visualize anything, so therefore they saw no similitude, and Yahshua was right there along with them, but they didn't see him. Just like Yahweh right along with you all the time, just something. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to wake you up to now, and we want you to see that, and we want you to understand that. Okay? All right? Okay. And, and we have, and, and right, right here, he said Joshua, we, we know Joshua, we Joshua, right? No J, no Joshua, no, no J, no Jesus, no J, no Jehovah, right? right? So we have right here, the illustration right here, of Joshua and Aaron and Moses in this tent down here in the land of Egypt, right? We also have Joshua right here on, on the side of Moses, as, he, as, as Moses ministered, right? They didn't recognize, they didn't know that that was... Yahweh manifests in the flesh as Yahshua son of Nun back here, mm -hmm. or to the Israel, okay, but later on they, they he revealed who he was all the time, all right? Mm -hmm. Okay? And he the one that transfigured for Moses up here and took the earthly clothes out, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, this is him here, this is him here, all right? Incorporeal, corporeal, okay? Mm -hmm. Got a body, all right? Yahweh held him Yahshua in a sense, all right? Mm -hmm. He revealed one, okay? Yes. So it says, um, it says, now listen, I have to cut some of these things up short and take some shortcuts now then. You know, he told, called Moses up in the mount. This is the first trip at Mount Sinai. He told them, remember, they didn't get wet when they went through the Red Sea. They didn't get wet when they went through the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. And they had left, and they had left Egypt. He called them up around, called Moses up in the mountain, and gave them the word to take back to the children of Israel. All right, mm -hmm. and that is according to um, Exodus, uh, uh, Exodus nineteen chapter. After they got out here, right, mm -hmm. on the forty seventh day, I leave the Egypt, I leave the land of Egypt, right, on June third. All right. So Yahweh called Moses up to the top of his mount, 
okay? Mm-hmm. So Yashasai, who was, who was Yahweh, one of the same, transfigured, all right? And one of, and told Moses, told the children of Israel before he come back down, tell them to clean for three days, because I'm going to speak down to them, mm-hmm. according to Exodus 20. So I'm going to speak down to them, the Ten Commandment law, orders and judgments, right? It's going to be, it's, 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 it's also it's a marriage, truly, mm-hmm. okay? okay? On June 6th, okay? All right? Mm-hmm. Nine o'clock in the morning. All right? It says, and tell them that he give them three days to clean up. <laughs> I didn't know I was coming up. And tell them that he give them three days to clean up and wash their clothes and all and to get up around the mountain. But don't touch the mountain, but gather up around it. He spoke those commandments from the mountain. And Moses wrote down the word that he spoke from the mountain. See? Mm-hmm. Now, if you notice, uh, using he spoke from the mountain, now that he suggests that there's a man there. Now, what we're trying to do is trying to get you off this foolishness. You can't find nothing. You're reading over everything all the time. And you can't discern ignorance and superstition and folly and foolishness if some of, of the folks around you can't find it. Then Moses had taken the blood of bulls and goats and consecrated the words that Yahweh had said. He wrote it down in the book. And he took the blood and sprinkled it on the book and the people and said to them, this is the what? Covenant. There they go. Mm-hmm. Covenant. Also marriage. One of the same is it. He said, covenant with Yahweh, thy Elohim, has a joiner to you. Now that's what he said. Now look, folks, there has to be somebody up there in that. Listen, there has to be somebody. That's what I'm talking about up there in that mountain. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. See, talking about Yahweh spoke from the mountain, so and so and so and so and, and going right on. And the next thing you know, you can't find no trace him at all. Nowhere then, as he spoke from the mountain, and Moses wrote it down, what he the commandments. Now remember now, they had the commandments that was written by Moses and consecrated and dedicated before Moses went up in the mountain, but he done wrote them down now and said, this is the covenant. Then he told him, listen now, follow, follow what I'm saying. Then he told Moses to come up in the mountain. I said, then he told Moses to come up in the mountain and he would give him tables of stone, which you have the toilet fishing right here, right? Right. Right. Stone Moses and Moses' hand right here. Okay. Okay. Alright. <clears throat> yeah. It says, now, what would Moses look like running around up in the top of the mountain and can't find nobody, and there wasn't nobody up there to give him no, no table of stone, said, no man has seen Yahweh, they were the wrong, they, they call God. Okay, but it's truly Yahweh or Elohim. No man has seen Yahweh Elohim at any time. And here you're talking about Yahweh calling him up in the mountain and telling him that he's going to give him a table of stone. And then now here you got Moses up there running around and he can't find Yahweh or nothing up there in the mountain. And by some hook or crook, he got some stones, table of stones, and he was coming back down the side of the mountain. Now you, now you see how stupid and how ignorant it is for. People will say that he wasn't up there in the mountain. You follow me, Bishop? <laughs> Bishop Short says, yes, sir. Right? Okay. So we got Yahweh. Take us here. Yahweh Ellen. The body right there, right? Yes. All right. It says, now we're trying, we're trying to locate something and we're trying to get somebody over to. This is his body. He operates and functions through it. He never, and he's ever present at all times under all conditions and circumstances. Now, when you begin to come into conscious real, realization of that, then you can find or then you can kind of see something about what John is talking about. See, it's impossible for you to, since you love Yahweh and then hate your brother. And some of us are, you know, untouchables. And we're so righteous. And we're so sanctified. And we're so holy and we're so pure and all that kind of thing that then act like the devil. Never smile. Ain't that something? That's right. That's right. <laughs> a smile would tear your face all up. Mm. <laughs> just like stepping on a soda cracker. Ain't that something? Mm. Just even just even look hateful. Mm. <laughs> act hateful. Snapping at everybody. 
then got the nerve to want somebody to think that you all that you are that you are right. <laughs> Father have mercy, I tell you. You see wrong attitude. Yes, we know the majority of the people are wrong. We understand that. But that ain't the way for you to act. The way for you to act, that's if you understand anything what we're talking about. And, and I'll tell you another thing, too. It's, this, it's, it's a disgrace for you to act like that and say you belong down here at this clinic or something. That's right. Or if, if you set me straight, honey. Yes. Father, have mercy for all of us. <clears throat> you like straighten up now. You know what I mean? Make yes. sure. Ain't that something? Yes. As much truth has been taught down here at this school, and then you go out here and act like that, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Somebody say, well, maybe he ought to stay at home tonight. He ain't doing too <laughs> well here. No, nah, folks. What I'm trying to get you to see here, this is not a play thing. This is real. And Yahweh manifested, as I have told you that in a book. We say that every animate and so-called inanimate object, ain't that something? Mm -hmm. And and thing in the universe in its totality. I love it. I love that. Animate in inanimate, ain't that something? Mm -hmm. That means moving or, or, or moving or, or moving or, or, or just still. You got mm -hmm. animate inanimate. You see how I go? You know, you know what it is to animate right, something, right? right? right. And be inanimate, is that right? right. He says, we told you that matter comes from spirit. And we told you the meditation, um, he said, and we told you the mediation in coming from pure spirit prior to get here on one of these charts, coming from pure spirit. Mm -hmm. He says, coming from, coming from pure spirit. So it's like the, media, the a mediation says, mm -hmm. you got me? Say come from coming from pure spirit, like a middle or or uh, abstract intermediate or or, or or mediation. All right, you see how I go? Yes. All right. It says, um, and we told you the mediation in coming from pure spirit. Try to try to get here on on one of these charts coming from pure spirit, and this is the in, intermediate state here. See, this is the intermediate state here. Is that right? Right. And the holy place is the intermediate state. You got me? Mm -hmm. All right? Like unto like Yahweh Elohim. Is that right? Mm -hmm. In the holy place. Beautiful. It says, he says, what do you mean by that? It's, it's the place between the most holy place and the outer court. So it's intermediate. So it passed on down. Now you see it in that chart there where we talked about the creation. See how we brought it on down and showed it to you and everything in the creation? Now listen, folks. Now you now you can believe me or not believe me, but you're not going to find anything any better anywhere else than you're going to find right down here in this queen. Ain't that so? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. If you go to heaven, you won't find anything any better. And I want to show you if you go to hell, you won't find anything any better. And if you go to the immediate state, which you, what they call the purgatory, I'm talking about the Roman Catholic Church, right? Purgatory, right? Mm -hmm. You won't find anything any better. Now, what do you mean when you say that? This is what I mean. I mean that Yahweh is everywhere. And when you're conscious of that, then even if you were in hell, you know, yes. and you were conscious of it, you wouldn't find anything any better. And if you were in heaven, you wouldn't find anything any better. If nothing there, any there's nothing any better than Yahweh. Now, do you see through what I'm talking about? Now, let's get back at this body so we can realize what we've come down here for. So we can see how much better it would be to prevail with somebody that didn't understand rather than for you to get up and show hostility or some igno uh Minios and uh, diabolical hatred or some, something like that, which means that you don't understand either. And then it's sad to, to see somebody come down here and say, well, this and that and the other is wrong. Look, folks, almost everybody ever seen these charts has said they're wrong. Now, just one more 
won't make it any worse or any better. Mm -hmm. And everybody that knows anything about me worldwide, they say I'm wrong. Now, what the difference is, it's going to make just just one more, just one little pitiful, you saying I'm wrong, that won't make it no worse, will it? And don't nobody have to wait on your decision. Now, what makes that? What's the cause of it? Say, you know what? To be carnal in mind is death. It is our carnal mind that causes us to think the things that we think and to act like we act. And then after we get through acting real nasty and bad, then we turn around and try to justify ourselves in it. Ain't doing nothing but just making it that much worse. Say, well, I believe I was right, and so and so and so and so. No, you wasn't. No, you wasn't. You were wrong. Now, we want you to be helped in 1973. We want you to get rid of this foolishness, get on out, down out of this cloud. See, now I want you to, you see now, we want you to get rid of this foolishness, get on out, down, down, out of this cloud. And we want you, we want, when we, when we talk about Yahweh on Yahweh, we want you, we want to have a body, something that we, that can be identified, identified in you. You follow what I mean? Is that something? Mm -hmm. All right, so back to what he was saying. See, that's why he says Yahweh, else and Yahshua, right? Right. The three states of Yahweh, right? Then we come, on, come over here. Now, what I understand, he said, that what? Lord, your body, the temple of Yahshua, right? Mm -hmm. right? Right? Right. Which is in you. Right. You know what I'm talking about? We got to we gotta get him, we got to get him here. You see how it go? Mm -hmm. All right. In you. That's who you really are. Okay? In a sonship degree. <clears throat> Not as a creator, but the creation. Okay? Right. It says, um, and we want you, we, when we talk about Yahweh El Yash, we want you, we want to have a body, something that can be identified, identified in you. You follow what I mean? Now, this is where. This is where we were. We're talking about him calling Moses up in the mountain and giving him commandments. We're talking about calling Moses, calling him, talk about calling Moses up in the mountain and giving him commandments, table of stone, right? Right. Okay. All right. Now we had to be up. Now he had to be up there in order to give Moses the table of stone, right? Right. So it means that he's saying that Yahshua, the son of Nun, who the Yahweh. Was up there so he can give the stone. Get that something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, "Now, now there isn't a whole lot of gods there. Just one. That's erroneous. We would know it. Right. Elohim. Elohim is one. Yahweh Elohim Yahshua. See, it's been turn turn back on here. It's been that way all the time. Yahweh Elohim Yahshua. It's been that way all the time. Now, if we would now if we." Now, if we would take this chart, I'll show it to you. We would say this is Yahweh, the head region, chest cavity, Elohim, and here Yahshua. Okay? But it's all one embodiment. All right? And he, he furnished it right here. Okay? This is what the world calls the God here, but it's truly called upon nature. Okay? According to the Romans, the first chapter, I believe around the 20th verse. Okay, 19 and 20. All right, King James Bible will say God here. The Holy Name Version will say it's upon nature, all right? With Yahweh, El and Yahshua's bodily form, right? These three are one. Right. The head carried like to Yahweh, the, the, the uh, chest carried like to Elohim, and the dominant carried like to Yahshua, is that right? Right. One embodiment, okay? It's upon nature of Yahweh, the bodily form, all right? It says, Yahweh, the head of the body, the chest cavity is coming down in here, then to the abdominal cavity. Then somebody say, you didn't say nothing about the legs and arms, but you see you run these, uh, uh, what you call them, stabs, right? So you talk about stabs, how they carry the, um, let me see. Well, they carry the, they, they carry the Ark of the Covenant, I know on stabs, right? What is, what, uh, let me see here. Yeah, it's on staffs, the Ark of the Covenant, right? But he's talking about, he says, staffs, staffs through here and carry it. That's what this is. And then you have locomotion. You move, 
And so he's talking about, okay, like they did pitch, they did pitch a tabernacle, you know, that stuff like that. So you understand that this that this body is, is like a type of your body, mm -hmm. right? Same one here is here. You got you said got the twelve twelve tribes kept around the tabernacle mm -hmm. or the twelve tribes kept around the body. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. all the twelve, you know what I mean, the twelve limbs. I mean, you know, uh, uh no I, I do it over here. How we have upper arm, lower arm, hand, right? Mm -hmm. Three, three with one. Mm -hmm. Same on, same over here. Upper arm, lower arm, hand. Three over here makes six, right? Okay. Three on this side, three on this side. One arm, one arm. Upper leg, lower leg, foot. Mm -hmm. One foot. Upper leg, lower leg, foot. I mean, I mean, one leg, one leg. Mm -hmm. Three parts, three parts, three parts, three parts, but yet with one. Equal twelve, right? right. Like twelve tribes that's kept around. You know what I mean? The tabernacle. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When y'all when the cloud move, they move, and then when they stop, they just pitch it, right? Right. So it's just like the same thing. You know what I mean like like the staffs or or the or or um, yeah, like the staffs or the uh, the uh, yeah, say it like that. This is what's carrying. Our mm -hmm. tabernacle, okay, all right, the bones or the staffs, okay, mm -hmm. or the twelve tribes, all right, okay. 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 It says staffs through here and carry. That's what this is, and then you have locomotion. You move three on each side. Three tribes here, right? Mm -hmm. Three tribe. In see, uh, come on. Three tribes here. Mm -hmm. Three tribes here, three tribes here, three tribes here, make a total of 12 tribes, all right? Yes. It says, staffs through here and carry it, that's what this is, and then you have locomotion. You move, three on each side, three tribes here, three tribes here in the back, three tribes here on the side, and three here. And four times three is 12. Now then, when you come over on the other side, then you bring this 12 here, and that 12 there, then you have 24, 24 what? 24 elders, right? Mm -hmm. 24 elders, 24 elders gathered around what? Gathered around the throne. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'll do it like this. Um, I'll use it as a pictorial illustration, okay? Have like 12, like 12 disciples, okay? On this side, right? Right. Both will make 12 disciples on this side of the cross. We're now residing at 12 apostles, is that right? Mm -hmm. If using this as a pictorial illustration, as this middle, port, middle portion right here, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like unto your spine, okay? Mm -hmm. All right? Or your vertebrae, right? So we understand we got 12 real on this side, right? Mm -hmm. And 12 real on this side. Then you go into Revelation, talking about 24 elders, right? Right. Kept around the throne of Yahweh, okay? Mm -hmm. You understand? Know well, we got 12 ribs on this side, 12 ribs on that side, right? right. We have a vertebrae, is that right? right. We get right over here. That pictorial illustration. Okay. Uh, we, have a, uh, we have it right here. Okay. Rib cage, 12 on this side, 12 on this side. Okay. Right. And right here. All right. So, Yahweh. Okay. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So, this is why it's made up. To point two. The spirit. All right. It says now you ought to be getting some idea of a body now. Now that's now what this is that you seen that you see sitting around here. This is the body of Yahshua Messiah. Fifth reading. What know you not that your body the temple of the Holy Spirit? Mm-hmm. Who is in you? Go right here. See who is in you. You're on in. Would you have a Yahweh and you are not your own? For we are bought with a price. Uh -huh. Now just wait a minute. Now you see the devil fooled Eve back here and, and caused was point up to that what that was Yahshua Messiah. He had to go and, and shed his blood. So Yahshua Messiah had to go and shed his blood. So then him shed his blood, he redeemed or restored you back to Yahweh. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. So then you were bought with a price. 
You know how much Judas wanted, wanted for him? 30 pieces of silver, 30 pieces. All right, read on. Therefore, right here. Therefore, glorify Yahweh in your body. Now, therefore, glorify Yahweh in your body and in your spirit, which are his. Which are his. That, he said, he said this is his body and not ours. All right? All right. If we are the offspring, that's where we come from. Listen, folks. If that's where we come from, that's where we are headed back to. Is that something? Yes. All right? So, but he really, he really talking about the inner man, which is our true self, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Going on back. That's where we, that's where we came from. So we got to go back. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Right on the trip. Right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Back from concrete, a spirit man come out the body, back back there, you got to understand? And then back there. Is that something? Yes. To be one with our father. Is that something? Mm. All right? It says now, that's where we come from. Listen, folks, if that's where we come from, that's where we are headed back to. Now, first, before you go any further, I want you to read next, Dr. Harry. You finished that, didn't you? Acts of the Apostles, the 17th chapter. So back over here. Okay. Back to the, uh, the offspring, which is the definition of philoprogenitiveness, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning love for one offspring, all right? So it says, for in him, him who? Him Yahweh, is that right? Yes. We live and move and have our being. Now see there, as some of you poets have said, as some of you the philosophers or poets have said, for we are also his offspring, see? Mm -hmm. We are his offspring. For we are also his offspring. Now listen, down here in John, you read, Yahweh he loved, loved us so much until he gave his only begotten son. Y'all just loved, loved the world, loved us so much that he gave one of you guys a son. Now we used to use a whole lot of big long words and we and we found um here. So now we found out that that's the way they want us to teach and then When we did that, they said they don't know what you're talking about, and then they called me an educated fool. Now, we would say there in expressing that in highly academic terminology that we were the offspring. And then while he died, John 3, 16, for the son, I mean the son died to restore us back. That was the manifestation of the final progenitiveness of Yahweh, the word now that word follow as in philosophy, pro, break it down, your suffix and your prefixes, gender, that means origin, that's the origin, Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Now that's John 3 and 16 says this, now we're, see we're the offspring, and he loved his offspring so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting, ever, <coughs> everlasting or eternal life. See how easy that was to break down? Now that's where we come from, spirit then into, let's call it spirit embodiment. Now if you notice, I didn't say spiritual embodiment. Now the reason why I didn't say spiritual embodiment is because that would suggest that there was something outside of that that had to come into and make it spiritual, okay? He is a spirit embodiment, right, within himself, not spiritual, but spirit within himself. There was no outside source to come in and to make him spiritual because he was the spirit embodiment himself. That's right. Then what we try to do, we try to put these things together in such a way that you can understand them. Now, is y'all sick of me? Arnie says no. Now right here, we try to show you, hear about it, tell you with knowledge and wisdom. Now in medical terms, so we have right here, in well right here it says the tongue with knowledge like the head cavity of Yahweh. I mean like the head cavity, which is like it's a Yahweh, okay? Alright. It says now in medical terms, those three would be called the um set decay. And from the septicate decay it animates it, uh Emanates three more. Now you got six. So in other words, he's talking about spawning into Yahweh. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, you see, in terms of wisdom and knowledge, 
Three love and justice emanates from these three here. Okay? Mm -hmm. The foundation, power, and strength emanate from these three, all right? Mm -hmm. So, nine, like unto Yahweh, El, and Yahshua. Okay, like the most holy place, holy place, court round about. All right? The nine within the ox, or within Yahweh. Yahweh makes the one back to one, or ten back to one, right? Mm -hmm. all right? Okay? It says, um, he said, now you got six, and, and, and from that emanates three more, and now you got nine. Now, this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about intelligence, intelligence, the crown. And see it over there? There's a picture over here, so you can see it. It says L here on a 40 play chart, right? Come on, this right here. Okay. Right? Back to that. Mm hmm. It takes you in form. It says, um, see that plate right there? So now that's the crown. Now somebody wanna would want to question that, say, how do you get how do you get like that? I never seen nothing like that in no Bible. Do you ever do you ever see the high priest that wore that bonnet on his head, right? Wore that bonnet on his head like a um like a um, uh what do you call those things? Like a, like, you know how you like to wear those, like those bandanas or those mm -hmm. scarves, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You see this bit right here, holding hold some Yahweh on, on there. Mm -hmm. On, right there, you understand? Yeah. So, that, so that's the outer at that time of the fight. Mm -hmm. We understand Yahweh, El him is, is, is in here. Right. Yahshua, you know what I'm saying? Right. He said, um, he said, um, he said, did you ever see the high priest that wore that bonnet on his head and had them strings that tied? around it, <coughs> excuse me, white <coughs> right across, white right up here around it, there was something wrote on it, it says, what was the writing on it, holies unto Yahweh, holies unto Yahweh, that was up here, that was the head, and then you have the other two strings that come from there, so then you got the crown, intelligence, then you got the one side of the head, wisdom, you got the other side of the head, knowledge, let me go right here, see, right mm -hmm. here, see, crown, Mm -hmm. Intelligence here, then the one one side wisdom, mm -hmm. one side knowledge, that right? That's right. All right. Like unto Yahweh. He said, now there's he said, now that string that correlates and corresponds to these three figures here. The two cherubim of glory in the Ark of the Covenant, right? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. <laughs> so why right here the tabernacle? See? It's like unto uh, Yahweh, like unto intelligence, to the two sides, like wisdom. Is now ain't that something? Mm -hmm. That's why it's very important, man. To read the transcript. So these, these are the words of Yahweh. These, these are not words of Dr. Kimley, all right? Yes. These are the words of Yahweh. That's the witness. He says, and from that emanates these three down here. Now he's pointing it out over there so you can see. Now any child, this is childbirth. Since they talk so much about abortion, all the head is formed first. And from that head emanates the rest of the body, is that right? Mm -hmm. And now then when they see any kind of shape and form at all three, what do you call that? Embryo. Sit right over here on this chart here. Okay. We had this you know, the baby being formed in the womb here, right? Mm -hmm. We have on here. Um, let's see. Yes, it's a baby umbilical cord placenta fluids, ovum. Bag of water, uh, land you go, meconium, mucus plug, and cervix. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right? He says, um, he says, and now when they see that any, they see any kind of shape and form at all there, what do you call that? The embryo. Embryo. Embryo, that's the embodied, that's the in, uh, embryonic state, and then it goes into another, into a, a goes in, and then it goes on into a further development, and then what path you got fetus. The fetus. Now, that show you how un unaware and how unconscious we are. Now, here's the cloud that brought them up out of there, just like uh, uh, what's the word that they use there? That umbrella. Well, said, you know, it's in a cloud right here, right? Mm -hmm. 
brought the children of Israel, Israel that led them out of the, uh, the land of Egypt. Is that right? Mm -hmm. put, a, put a, a pillar of fire by day and a pillar of fire by night, right? Put a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, right? Okay. We understand that cloud is truly Yahweh, right? Right. Cloud here, Yahweh is cloud, right? Right. Right. And you tell them over the business seat to you, to our Yahweh would appear in uh, 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 in the clouds of the mercy seat, right? Mm -hmm. According to Leviticus 16 and 2. Right. Is that right? Same cloud. See? All right. It says, um, it says, uh, now here's the cloud that brought them out of here, just like, uh, what, what's that word that you use there? That umbrella. It says, placenta. Uh, it says, um, says, uh, says placenta. See, they was under that cloud, that was the placenta that led them up out of Egypt, and when they got into the wilderness, so when they got to the wilderness, going to the holy place, mm -hmm. saying, now we're talking about coming down, forming that child, then the uh, embryonic, and then the further development to the fetus. Don't that word suggest something to you when they got out to the water, they began to write and complain with Moses? What's wrong? Feed us. <laughs> we see, we just uh, pass right on over these things, and we just don't have no idea what we're talking about one way or the other. And they're arguing, disputing around about it like we knew something about it and don't know straight up. And they think we don't have no proof for nothing. We have proof down here for what we're saying. You can't deny that you that, that you can see that umbrella and that cloud. And then it comes on down and it's attached where you follow what I mean. And then there's a substance that comes down through that, that and feeds that child feed him wear down here at the belly. You want to argue about that? Now listen closely now. Remember I told you that he is wisdom intelligent, that he's wisdom knowledge, uh, intelligent wisdom and knowledge. That's them three. Then from that three emanates three more. It says, uh, say phallic decay, and from that three emanates three more. Now you got nine, but there's ten all together. Now what is the tenth? The body, right? Mm -hmm. So we're saying it's like you have nine, right? Nine uh, uh, vessels of the tabernacle, right? Mm -hmm. And this court round the bow would be like the tenth part, right? Mm -hmm. Or like the kingdom, all right? Mm -hmm. Like Yahweh, is that right? right. It's like right here. So you have the kingdom. This is the kingdom down here. Mm -hmm. It's like the tenth part, all right? Going around the nine. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So just like this cloud, to go all the way around, mm -hmm. it's like it's a Yahweh, the tenth part of Yahweh. You understand? Everything within the cloud. You understand? We're in the kingdom. Yes. All right? Or the Yahweh, right? Or in eternity. You go, you go so many places with that. Okay? Mm -hmm. He says, um, He said, now what is the tenth? He said, the tip of the body. He said, so, he said, so, um, oh yeah, I'm back, I'm sorry. So like the bone structure, well, we may have like the tenth part, right? Yeah. Right? Right. So you, got, you got, man has, just like you have nine here, and nine major systems in, in man's body, is that right? Mm -hmm. Nervous system, reproductive system, in, in the endocrine system, respiratory system, circulatory system, respiratory system Epitory system, digestive system, muscular system, skeletal system. All right? The tenth part, the body, the tenth part. Is that something? Mm -hmm. All right. It says, um, see over there in the red back of back of one. Take it all the way, take it all the way around. The kingdom, that's the art. Right. See that's how you know that, right? Yes. The art. Like a zero, the art. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's the and that's his kingdom. He's the king in it, and that's what we're talking about to you. 
Now, that's 10. 10 is concrete, part of abstract. 10 is all of it. And if we say 10 is all of it, now listen, folks. Listen, we're trying to give you some idea of what this thing is all about. And then when you draw this court round about, now everything is, is within that. Is within that, right? Right. So now that everything is within him, embodied within him, so, it, so it's within him we live and we move and we have our tabernacle. Or we have our being. He told Moses to build one that he might dwell among you. But now certainly there is something else there that folks usually miss. I thought you said that he come come out of Eden with them here, right along with them. Yeah, he was, but when they got, see, he brought the tent along with him. See, Dr. Gross has been doctoring this thing here since we brought this thing, these things out. Well, I'm just gonna let it stay like it, like that. But I, but I'll just tell you the facts of the case, and that what this is. This is the tent here. See. And you see that tent right here. You see how I mm -hmm. go? Same tent as here. Same tent here. Okay? Meaning tent. Alright? And Yahweh pits, Yahweh's side pits on the back side of, of Mount Sinai here, okay? okay? It says, um, this is a tent here, but he made it more pronounced so you could you can understand, but the tent that they brought out and brought through the wilderness, and they brought other tents too, that tent, listen, the tent of the tabernacle or the congregation was brought out. Now listen, closer to what I'm saying, now it was pitched on the back side of Mount Sinai, you got to say that, right? Mm -hmm. Now it was pitched on the back side of Mount Sinai, now you see right there. Mm -hmm. Now listen very carefully. But now it was a far off from the camp, so it was far off from the camp, mm -hmm. okay? So when he told Moses of the stuff that they brought up out of Egypt, told Moses to build him a tabernacle, that he might dwell among them, you see, then Moses built a tabernacle that he saw in the cloud, see, that he saw in the cloud, mm -hmm. intangible, tangible, okay? Mm -hmm. And then now, get this one straight now, here's where we lost it again. Now, this is where we lose out again. It isn't just a physical man sitting on another sitting in another physical man. That's right. You see how it goes? Right. Ain't no physical man inside no physical man. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm talking about? So they, so you got the religious I mean not religious, erroneous doctrine, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Let's say Tan Spirit is saying that um that Dr. Killing is in you. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. Dr. Killing is was a physical man. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So I go mm -hmm. side go side straight it out. Mm -hmm. Ain't no physical man inside no physical man. Mm -hmm. The spirit man is inside underneath this physical man, mm -hmm. which is Yahshua. You listening? Yes. The Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. All right. It says, it just it isn't just a physical man sit in another physical man. It's this incorporeal that entered in into here in that cloud. See how I go? Mm -hmm. All right. Incorporeal. See. Into corporate, you got me? Right. And the corporeal was consuming the tomb and resurrected back into its super corporeal state. You understand? Yes. It took off the earth suit. You understand? Mm -hmm. It burnt off the earth suit. You got what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right. It says, it says, it says, that's him in the cloud, and here he, and here. And, and here he is here in the clouds, see? You understand? Know yes. Now the body, the physical body, they couldn't tell nothing about that. Yahshua was walk, was just walked along there with them. They didn't know that he was Yahweh Elohim Israel. See how I go? Mm -hmm. the, the Torah picture up there right here. With the all the time. They didn't know what we revealed to him who that was in that body until we revealed to Moses and uh Numbers, but it's built to everyone, and all of them come to, in, according to uh, Yahshua 24 chapter. Is that right? Okay? okay. He said, Now, I'm, I'm going to have to hurry and close this one out, but before I close this out, you watch what I want to say. Now, 
Now, see, I showed you that the tent was pitched on the back side. Now, I'll show you that the tent was pitched on the back side. And they were away from the camp. And he told them to take the substance that they had brought them out of Egypt, take the stuff that they brought them out of Egypt, okay? Mm -hmm. And make him a tabernacle that, that he might dwell among them, okay? Mm -hmm. So then they made the tabernacle and he dwelt among them. Now, this is what I mean when I say that. I mean, it was three tribes on this side. Mm -hmm. I mean, three tribes on this side, three mm -hmm. tribes on this side, three tribes here, three tribes here, make a total of 12 tribes, right? Right. That's to say, he's among them. Now, you remember what I, what I said a while ago about the M, uh, M nation? It's an in, in that nation and the kingdom and how they were in there. And now it says, and now look, you being many and innumerable companies, you being many, you being many are one body and one bread. You remember that all the way there in the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians. See now, none of these things are spiritual. People with carnal mind, they don't understand nothing about it. And they're looking for the Roman called Jesus, truly uh -huh. Joshua, to come back and jump down out of the, out of the cloud. Ain't that what it's saying today? Yes, that's what it's saying. We've got to read that Joshua side is come. Right. Not going to come, but is here, never left, right? right? He said, now let me go on and prove that. Now remember, I'm talking about a body. I'll say it this way I'm talking about your body, which is his. Now we have, now we have to have a body in this. Now if you don't have that, you don't have a body in it somewhere, then you have speak in side cloth of mythology and superstition. You've got to have a body. Ain't no use in talking about Yahweh if he don't exist. Ain't no use in talking about Yahweh and there is none. We've got to have some identification. Now this is what it's going now this is what it's going to do. It's going to bring me back now to where he told Moses to come up into the mountain. That's the 24th chapter. Now hurry up, right, real quick, because I realize my time is about to expire. I'll turn it on here, off, please. And he said to Moses, come up to Yahweh. Now listen, this is short. It wouldn't seem, it, now listen, this is short. Now let's see if this is short. Wouldn't it seem to you like it would be full talk to ask him to come up there in the mountain unto him, and he wasn't up there. <laughs> now, there ain't no, now you stop reading that ignorance like that. He said, come up to me in the mountain, all right, and then what? Thou, Aaron, nigga, have to buy you. Mm -hmm. Bring some witnesses along with you, all right, Ray, and send the elder Israel, and worship me afar off. Mm -hmm. And worship you afar off. Now, that's the reason why we put these these folks down here are far off. They they were not up in in the top of the mount. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are far off here. And here he told them to come up in the mountain. And there's the seventy elders. See right there, seventy elders. Mm -hmm. All right, read reader. And Moses alone shall come near Yahweh. And Moses alone, see, shall come near Yahweh. Okay. Now I just I, I just want you to see, folks. Let, let me tell you something. I told you that Yahweh caught me up into the third heaven and showed me, but I didn't see a thing of you. You see what I mean? And there's some others going around talking about him not being up there to say nothing about me. You see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. You see how damn stupid it is? They even said he wasn't up there. All right, read on. Now Moses alone. Now Moses by himself. Now these come up this far and saw him in a vision. See. It says right here, vision of Elohim in, 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 of Elohim in, in corporeal form. Okay? It's 73. But they are far off, though. It's not as high as Moses. Okay? Mm -hmm. Moses in the third heaven. They like him, they like him in, in the second heaven, okay? Mm -hmm. All right? He says, um, 
Now Moses by himself, now we've come up this far and saw him in a vision that they might witness his presence up here, but Moses alone and by himself, that's the reason why, Roger, I don't want no argument out of you. Don't you be talking back to me. Don't you be trying to tell me what I didn't see. You sit still and let me tell you my story. And after you heard my story, be like the uh, Areopa gates, the Areopa uh, gates up there in Mars Hill. They sat down and listened to somebody's story and they, um, they, uh, they came along. They didn't condemn them before. They heard the story, but now you've heard my story for 41 years and there ain't never been nobody here able to refute it. It's been a lot of folks here that don't know what I'm talking about and just even enough to say that Yahweh wasn't up here. Your father said, I don't, I don't say here. He said, said, it don't say here. What it does say here, Yahweh said, come up there. And for your information, he, he, he wasn't just on up in this mountain. Yahweh was everywhere. Mm -hmm. See, I found that out too, all right? And Moses alone, now look here, let me tell you something else else now. Here goes the high priest alone and by himself into that, into that most holy place. See? The high priest alone and by himself, so you see him right here, by himself, mm -hmm. right? See it? Yes. To the most holy place, you zoom in. Mm -hmm. see? The high priest alone and by himself in the most holy place. Now here's some folks, Williams. When Moses went up, in, went up here in, the, in that mountain, all right, and Yahweh showed him how to build a tabernacle. See. Mm -hmm. Now there were some folks down here that wasn't up there. Uh, Abarim, Dathan, and Korah. They were master builders down here in Pharaoh's treasure houses. Okay. Mm -hmm. They didn't see it, and, and when Moses began to tell them how to build the tabernacle, they said, that won't hold up. That ain't no good. That ain't the way to do it. Well, they wasn't up there in the cloud. They didn't know nothing about it, but they know more about how to build it than Moses knew, and yet Yahweh just showed it to him alone. Well, he just drew a line and said, well, who's ever on this side, stand over here. Who's ever on the other side, get over there, and he just, he just opened up the earth. Swallowed them up and went on and built the tabernacle. And when Moses was about to build a tabernacle, he said, See, he said, See in the 40th verse of, of, of uh, Exodus, the 25th chapter, see that, see that thou make all things according to Hebrews 8, chapter verse 5, 2, according to the pattern showed thee in the mount. Now, here's the, the endorsement. When Moses had dedicated, built this tabernacle and dedicated it, mm -hmm. the same tabernacle, that same thing that he saw in the, in the way it was supposed to be done, that's in the cloud. See, the entitled tabernacle here. Tattled tabernacle here. See? He says, that same tabernacle, the same thing that he saw in, in the way that it was supposed to be done, that's in the cloud. That same cloud floated right over this tabernacle and it covered it. That meant that Moses had built that tabernacle like the one he, he seen up there. Mm -hmm. But Abarim, Dathan and Korah, they wanted to jump on him. They perished. And the, and the priest, they couldn't minister in there because of the smoke. And that was also true with the temple too. And its dedication. And we have the temple here, okay? Mm -hmm. Michael Zion here, okay? Tabernacle here, Mount Zion, temple on Mount, on Mount Moriah, okay? Now there's people all around trying to get you, now there's people all around trying to tell you about something about something that they don't know anything about. Now I'm not through, but I've got a, got a lot of ground yet I want to cover to to bring you into realization of some things so that you can see what I'm talking about. Now, 
we have to work fast, and I'm trying to get from getting all ring and wet with sweat. Now look, now what we're talking about, we're talking about a body. Now when Moses, when the children of Israel saw it, said the body of heaven in its clearness, to the body of heaven in its clearness, mm -hmm. and under his feet, and he laid not his hands, there you got a body, see? Now listen, over here in the third chapter of Galatians, we can find it in the, in the second chapter of Genesis. Now you pay attention, you pay attention to what we're talking about. Remember he called up Moses here and told him to come up here and he would give him table stone. Is that right? Is that almost right? Student said that is right. All right now, he's going to have to be up there. See, if you knew how to go through this book and find out something about the truth that's different, now, what you got there in the third chapter about that angel uh, that was ordained in the hands of an angel, the old covenant, in the third chapter there of Galatians, I need read for me, reader, Galatians, the third chapter in verse 19, please. Galatians 3 and 19, Holy Name Bible. Go ahead, please. Wherefore then serveth a, a ceremonial law? It was added because of transgressions. Till the seed shall come to whom the promise was made, mm -hmm. and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Thank you. So it said the ceremonial law, right? Mm -hmm. Getting on the side of the cross here. It said to the seed will come with the mediator, mm -hmm. with truly Yahshua Messiah, all right? Yes. Will come in the four thousand. 4,000 years, okay. Thank you, reader. It says, that's right. Wherefore, then serve the law. Now listen. Now this is the now this is the law. Now, get me straight. Now let's straight, let's, let's get straight up. Wherefore, then serve the law. In other words, if Yahweh had made a promise with Abraham back here, and then after he made the promise with Abraham, you understand he made a promise with Abraham, right? Mm -hmm. You see, he's like all yes. the founders of the earth, right? Mm-hmm. And that a seed would go into a land and be evilly entreated for right. 400 years, right? Y'all would bring about with a mighty hand, right? right. But also, um, the end of the seed, um, it'd be a numeral company, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like like the stars of heaven on the sand of the sea. Remember that? Right. All right. And then that seed is going to have to come out of here. But that true seed, that seed came through, the, that true seed came through, uh, through, through Isaac. Right, yeah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. Isaac, Isaac, like a type of Joshua, you understand? Okay? Mm -hmm. Alright? <clears throat> so he's talking about the law. He said, now, we go on this side here. Mm -hmm. We have law of the spirit and spirit law on this side now, okay? Okay. Not the law of the ordinances. Mm -hmm. The law of the spirit, the spirit of life, or the uh, uh, spirit law, law of the spirit, the spirit of life, okay? Alright? It says, uh, in other words, if Yahweh had made a promise to Abraham back here, and then after he made a promise to Abraham, and then he goes and gives him a law, then what good is the law? Does it does this annul, abolish, or, or eradicate, or invalidate? Or invalidate? I'm sorry. It says this. It says uh, this and all, abolish or eradicate or invalidate them enough words, isn't it? The law, not by any means. See, the law was added because of the indebted transgression. So, law was added because of the endemic transgression. I'll use this break right here. It says second age and blue age before the flood. It said age of conscience, and Adam all died. Okay. And right here, down here, says on this place that academic transgression. We don't understand. We understand about the story. Is that right? Okay. Okay. It says. It says. Um, see, the law was added because of, of the academic transgression. How long till the seed should come to whom the promise was made? Now you read on dot. Wherefore serve the law? Wherefore serve the law then? Wherefore then served the law, it was added because of transgression to the seed should come to whom the promise was made. That's right. 
and it was ordained by angels. Now wait just a minute. Everybody look up here. We're not, and we just refuse to be stupid and ignorant after tonight. We're not going to be no more ignorant after tonight. Repeat what you just said there, Roger. It was added because of the transgression. Until the seed should come to whom the promise was made. That's right. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. See? Mm -hmm. Now you listen here, fella. <clears throat> don't you bring, don't you be trying to stand around and tell me that he wasn't up there in that mountain. He got to have some hands up there too. See, he got to have some hands up there too. Don't tell you what up there in the mountain. Right. He got to have some hands up there too. They saw him with, with hands up there, went up there with moles in, and for your information, I'd like to just spin this one while we got it. He told Moses at the burning bush, if we if, if he go down there, see, mm -hmm. he told Moses at the burning bush, when the Moses came out of Egypt, now we have given a divine vision up here, according to Exodus 3, for him to come, come down. Mm -hmm. He's here and here. Same place at the same time, showing that Yahweh, Yahweh ever present, right? Right. Everywhere at the same place, at so the same time, right? He says, they saw him with hands up there, went, went up there with Moses. And for your information, I'd like to, to spend this one while we got it. He told Moses at the burning bush, if he go down there, he, he said, sir, I will be with you. Mm -hmm. I would like for you to know that. He was with Moses even before ever Moses found out anything about it, right? Moses ain't never been nowhere mm -hmm. without him. See now, we're done with that fault with this folly and this ignorance. All right, said now it was ordained by angels in the hands of a mediator. Is that what you read? Is that what's in your book? Now there's got to be a man up there if, if it's gonna be some hands. Now I told you we were talking about a body. This thing of running around and saying Yahweh is spirit and you ain't and you ain't got nothing, you can't tell nobody nothing. See, we know it. it evidently, you know he he must have to have been up there somewhere. Now it's now it say now it say it was ordained by an angel in the hand of a mediator. Now, what we got to do is find out who the mediator is. See, Thanks. and this is. <laughs> the mediator, mm -hmm. right? The intermediate go between, right there, right? right? Intermediate state, is that right? right? That's in between, or the mediator between Yahweh, right, mm -hmm. and man, right? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. It says, now read that. I think you find that in, 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 in uh, it says 2 Timothy 2 and 5, but it's really 1 Timothy 2 and 5. I need you read for me, read it, please. First Timothy two and five, please. First Timothy two and five out of the Holy Name Bible. For one is Yahweh, and one mediator between him and men. Right. The man, Yahshua the Messiah. The man, Yahshua the Messiah. Okay. Thank you, reader. It says, For one is Yahweh. Now listen, for one is Yahweh and one man between him and men. Now wait, now listen, like Listen, one meeting between Yahweh and man. Now listen, you Roman Catholic, you got you get this straight. And you Protestants and all the rest of you folks that would like to be stupid. For no for no good reason. They're just pointing out Yahweh is one. That's the reason why I showed you Yahweh head, chest cavity, and double cavity, right? right. Yahweh head cavity, double cavity, chest cavity. I mean, Yahweh head cavity, chest cavity, double cavity. And it makes up just one embodiment, see? Yahweh is one. There's one. Yahweh is one. Listen, and there's one mediator. What do you mean, mediator? What is a mediator? Anyhow, a mediator is a, is a go between. Mm -hmm. Now, I told you, I told you that the holy place was between the most holy place. In the outer court, right? <laughs> That's the mediator. Now, I told you the, the mediator is the go-between. I told you the holy place is between the, the most holy place in the court round the bow. The mediator. Hide in the shadow, right? Right. He said, now, and that's what it shows in your pattern. When you take it here, illustration, Israel at the foot of the mountain. Israel at the foot of the mountain. 
they were leaving the bayou at the plateau. Okay? Like this, like the holy place, like the most, like the holy place of the court round about here. Mm -hmm. Alright? Moses on top of the mount. See? Like the most holy place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got the outer court. See? Right here. You got the outer court. And you got the holy place. And you got the most holy place. <laughs> and typed up. Here we're talking about right up here in the, in the mountain. Now we want to find out who the mediator he was, and then you can stop that stupidity and ignorance, and then you'll know who Yahshua was. All right, read the man Yahshua side. No, you have to read the whole thing. For for one is Yahweh, and one mediator between him and men, and one just one mediator between him and men, the Pope. No, the man Pope Paul. No. Well, what about old Henry C? Remember, that's me. <laughs> Said, no, no, sir. That's something. Right? Right. Hey. Talking about Dr. Henry said the Kennedy is your savior. But the spirit come through here and say, no, he's not. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. He's saying, I am in Yahshua's side. The tabernacle didn't fight at the time. See? He killed him off. He said, no, no, sir. Well, what about Dr. Gross or Dr. Harris? No. See, Isaiah, I mean, Brother Williams is over here and here at Bishop Shore. They know all about it. Won't they do? No. Just one meter between him and men. Who is that you say? The man, Yahshua the Messiah. The man, Yahshua the Messiah. Now, here's what I just got through telling you that Yahshua the Messiah was up here in that mountain with hands. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now he gave Moses the table of stone, and not only that, Roger, he went up with him and come down with him out of that mountain, right? Went up with him for the Exodus 12, right? Right? Right. Same one, same one that called him was right with him. Is that something? <laughs> he came down with him. See how he came down right with him. See how he go? Yes. But the physical body was not up here. He did with, he did with Moses' air man. Mm -hmm. And you see that like, like a projection. Right. Right, it's really taking place with inside of Moses, you got me? Mm -hmm. All right, spirit with spirit. Or just truly, he, that's what it really is inside the body, Moses, really. You understand? Yeah. Inside of us, we got to read about that. Look, what? Don't you know. Look, your body of the, the temple of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit right here. Right. You understand? Mm -hmm. Never not separate, you understand? Right. All right. He says now, He says, um, and Moses ain't left him nowhere, and neither have you. Now that's what we're trying to make you make you try to wake you up to. We want to show what it is really in you. See how I go? Mm -hmm. To cause you to have what we call life, physical life, and then spiritual life. That was talking about outside out there. Remember that? Right. That was y'all were talking. You see how I go? Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to show you. That proves the reality and existence of him. Now you just said one is the meteor and the man Yash Messiah. Now somebody said, well, that's Jesus. All right, <laughs> let's take it on further. <laughs> Jesus, wrong answer, right? That's right. He said, now get the fifth chapter of the first epistle of John. Now try to now try to be still a minute or two, and I'll get this out for you. The fifth chapter, the first chapter, the, the first epistle, I mean First, how did it go? First. First John, yeah, first John. First John, the fifth chapter, okay, in, in, in uh, verse 19. It says, and we know that, now where are you reading? First, first, uh, first John, the fifth chapter, verse 19. First epistle of first John, the fifth chapter, in verse, in 1920 verse, now you reading that, and we know that we are of Yahweh, and the whole world will lie to wickedness. John said, now we know this, and the whole world will lie to wickedness. And we know that the Son, and we know that the Son of Yahweh has come, the Son of Yahweh has come, and has given us an understanding that we may know him. See? And we're bringing on home now. Now, see, that's what we've been telling you all the time. That's what you come down here for, is to know something about Yahweh, our Father, See, not old here we see. See how I go? Mm -hmm. He is setting these schools up for us to be coming down here 
in retirement, they bring back the class to learn about Henry C. Kimmel, you understand? Right. We come to class to learn about Yahweh, you listening? Right. That's what we're trying to tell you about. We're not trying to tell you something about the Pope. The hell was him, or any other man, right? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm talking about? Yes, I'm, I get mean at times, and just as nasty as, as I can get, because I don't like you to bitch somebody said, well, now I thought you was talking about back there a while ago about being nice. Yes, but let me tell you something. Yahshua was nice too up there in the temple, that's right. He was treating them nice, but then he took them cords and beat them out of there. It's written that my father's house shall be called the house of prayer, but you made it a den of thieves. Now he said, my father's house. Then after the third year, he come on back to that, said, now, your house is left. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, and you will not see anything of me until anymore until you say, Blessed is he that comes in the name of Yahweh. And he rolled on in Jerusalem, went right on back up there to the Sanhedrin Council, and cussed them out. Said, You generation of viper, you hypocrites, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Said, you you devour widows. You got it right there in the twenty fifth chapter of Matthew, twenty third chapter, and and he, I mean he. I mean, he, they said, look here, they got all warm, you know, they, they saw who was talking, they saw who he was talking about, see, it's time for him to be crucified, he knew that, see, he got that, see, he got that thing all stirred up in him, and the next thing, you know, he has to be on the cross on time, and that's how he made it, see, he was on time, see, the devil always want to knock you out, Whatever he cuts. See, when he <laughs> finds out you've got his number, then he's through with you. Now, what did you read? Now, what did you just read? Now, we know that the Son of Yahweh has come and has given us understanding. Now, Dr. Harris, where is it that at? Now, Dr. Harris, where is that at where he gave him an understanding? Where he gave him an understanding at his resurrection. I need read reader Luke twenty four chapter verse forty four, please. Luke twenty four and forty four, Holy Name Bible. And he <coughs> said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses mm -hmm. and in the prophets mm -hmm. and in the Psalms concerning me. Mm -hmm. Before you go on the cross here. <laughs> right, before he got on the cross, and then after he got on the cross, um, yeah, body consumed the tomb, resurrected, a super incorporeal, back to a super incorporeal form, right? And they have the picture again, just the word that he's speaking unto them, right? He opened up the understanding now, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you, reader. And he opened up their understanding in the scriptures, give them, give them some understanding about it, and show them how it was to behoove him to suffer because the scripture had said that he had opened up their understanding. And now they're saying, and we know that the son has come, see, mm -hmm. and given us understanding. The other fellow out there, he don't know nothing about it. He don't understand a thing about it, giving us some, giving, giving us some understanding. You follow what I mean? And then not only that on the day of Pentecost, see, on the day of Pentecost, Okay. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit comes into him and broadens his understanding. Now that was him coming in them. See how I go? Right. See, the Holy Spirit has come in them. The start of his age. It has come in us. Mm -hmm. Right? Got to be saying. What? Don't you know you're by the temple of the Holy Spirit on truth? Joshua, you understand? As of today. You know saying? Not coming to get in you, in you. You listening? Yes. All right. <clears throat> Y'all could have read in John 40, 26 about another comfort coming. And when he and when he come, he will receive of mine and show it unto you. Now listen, folks, I'm talking about a body all the time. Now you just read what? And have given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. Now you see that we may know him that is true. See, folks, if we were what you ought to be. You ought to know everybody else that gets up in this pulpit and don't say the right thing. You ought to know the difference between the carnal mind and spiritual mind. Say, I go. Mm -hmm. 
you ought to know that a natural minded man don't understand spiritual things. All right, read. And we are in him, that is true. All right, read. Even in his son, even his son, even the son of Joshua. Now that's that's Jesus the folks is is talking about. The true Joshua. Mm -hmm. Even in his son Joshua Messiah, the true Elohim. Now hold it, hold it. See, you want to find him. Now we're now we're identifying him. That man that walked around down there on the ground at Yahweh side and, and, and the folks called and the folks called Jesus to, in a body, John 12, uh, 1 Timothy 3 16, I believe it is. Now let me finish there. Before you go over there, read there what you just read. This is the true Elohim. Now this is the true Elohim. I just put right here. And this is the true Elohim, all right? And eternal life, and eternal life. Now, that was him walking around. That was the true Elohim, was the true Yahweh, and eternal life. That is the mediator, see? That's the same, that is Yahshua, Yahweh manifested in the physical body. Okay, I'll stop like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's all right. Now we're over here now. You understand me? All right, read. Now that's the true, that's the true Elohim, not the that, not that old bastard sitting over there in the Vatican. See, I want to make a distinction here. And not your pastor. They tell they tell me they heard about me every which way. You tell them I said that old bastard over there. And your pastor. See, we have it right here. He told illustrations mm -hmm. on, on an apostasy play here. The Pope of Rome, and he called it bastard, right? right? Mm -hmm. Sitting over in the Vatican, you got me? Type in shadow. It tends to be incarnated in, in, in the Pope, you understand? Yes. All right? There's six on, on our side, okay? All right? Mm -hmm. It says, <clears throat> Yes, tell him I said that old bastard over there, and your pastor, and everybody's pastor. We're talking about the true Elohim now. I'm not afraid of anybody. I'm not afraid to die. That's right. I'm not afraid of nobody. You will be doing me a favor, but I tell you. All right, now you got, now we found out. Now that's what what we've been, that's what we come down here for to find out the true Elohim, the true mediator, the, the true mediator, the true intercessor, the true eternal life. You follow? He said, now, 1 Timothy 3.16 says, get, uh, go and read that please. I'll read it from King James Version. Uh, 1 Timothy 3.16 out of the King James Version. Put the corrections there, please. Okay. Go, go ahead. And without controversy, great is the mystery of the, great of the, the mystery, mystery of Yahweh. Elohim. Well, great yeah. mystery of Yahweh. Yahweh. Start back over. Okay. And without controversy, uh, 1 Timothy 3.16 out of the King James Version. Version. And without controversy, great is the mystery of Elohim. Great is the mystery of Yahweh. Excuse, excuse me. Great is the mystery of Yahweh. Turn it back over, please. Okay. Please. And without controversy, great is the mystery of Yahweh. Read. Yahweh was manifest in the flesh. All right. Read. Justified in the spirit. Read. Seen of angels. Read. Preached unto the Gentiles. Uh -huh. Believed on in the world. Right. Received up into glory. All right. So there you go again. Yahweh Elohim will manifest in the flesh. Right? Yes. And Yahweh Elohim Yahshua will manifest in these physical bodies as of today, right? Right. Right? It says, what? No, no, no. Don't you know your body is filled with the Holy Spirit? You understand? Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit, like unto the corp on about, Elohim like unto the uh, holy place, and Yahweh like unto the most holy place, right? These three are one. You understand? Know yes. You can't, have, you can't have Holy Spirit without Elohim and Yahshua, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's Yahweh all the time, okay? All right? Yes. Yahweh here, Yahweh here, Yahweh here. Yahweh here, Yahweh here, Yahweh here. Yahweh here, Yahweh here, and Yahweh here. You understand what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Two manifestations, three states, one spirit, all right? Yes. Okay? And without controversy, now listen. There ain't no need of you arguing. 
ain't no need of, and you tried to bring up up no debate. Talking about them three distinct individual personalities, talking about what the what the religious world preaches mm -hmm. right, or teaches, that you have a trinity, mm -hmm. right? That the Father over here, the Word or Son here, and the Holy Spirit over here, right? Mm -hmm. That's just, that's that's not that's a trinity. That's not a unity. You understand what I'm right. talking about? Yahweh is one. Right. All right? Ain't no need for that, buddy. And that would end our English transcript entitled uh, The Air Presence of Yahweh and the Idea of My Conduct by Dr. Henry C. Kennedy, Los Angeles, California, 1973. If you got anything on the day's transcript, all praise belongs to Yahweh only. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that will conclude another lecture in my Omaha class meeting. Meetings here in Omaha, Nebraska. Do we have any comments or, or questions? All praise for Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We hold classes here in Omaha, Nebraska, Omaha class meetings on Friday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and on Sunday from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. If, you, if you'd like to attend a class here, you can contact us by email. Our email address is yashua47 at gmail.com. Once again, Yashua is spelled Y-A-H-S-H-U-A. 47 at gmail.com. Leave us a detailed email concerning the day and time that you'd like to come and visit with a brother here in Omaha, Nebraska. These are free lectures, and uh, we ask when you come, we ask that you pay attention. Also, um, we upload our videos at every class. You can find our videos. You go to YouTube, search, put in Omaha class meetings. That's Yash Messiah to lead, direct, and guide you to the videos that they have prepared for you to watch before the foundation of the world. Also, for further contact information, you can dial, and we use a voicemail, you can dial for Dr. Stefan Williams, area code 402 973 8987, or for Dr. Rapunzel Williams, area code 402 609 6588. Leave us a detailed voicemail or leave us a detailed email either way concerning the day and time that you'd like to come and visit us here in Omaha, Nebraska. All right? And last but not least, let's all stand for the doxology. Our doxology can be found in the King James Version of your Bible under the book of Jude, spelled J-U-D-E, verse 24 and verse 25. Also, in the, in the Holy Name Version of One's Bible, under the book of Judah, spelled J-U-D-A-H, same verses, verse 24 and verse 25. Now unto him that is able to keep from falling, and the gent you falleth for the presence of the glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise elder, my Savior, through Yahshua Messiah, our sovereign, belong in glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.